Julian, obviously, uh, last one out, you know, a, a big win over a, a, you know, a recognizable name, a guy that had a lot of respect. Did that feel like a, a special win for you? Yeah, you know, um, Jordan was coming with a lot of hype, even though he's, I think at the time, like two and two. But uh, he had some really tough fights against some really tough dudes. And uh, he came out on top a couple times against guys that you might not think he was going to do that to. Um, I think uh, the Korean Superboy was the big one, right? And right. So when people beat certain people, you kind of, uh, you kind of, level them up to that. So, you know, going into that fight, you know, I was I was worried that he had the abilities to beat me, but at the same time, he's like 25, and I'm like, man, I'm 32 years old. I've been doing this for a long time. I can't let this kid come in here and uh, and beat me, even though I was the one kind of going in there because it was short notice for me. What, so, what I mean, what do you point to? I mean, obviously the, the run that you're on, I know you had the one setback, but, I mean, it's been a great stretch of your career, right? I mean, is it the experience? Is it something that you changed? I mean, what is it that everything seems to be clicking now? Yeah, you know, I, man, I don't know. I think uh, I think the first, you know, I was one-on-one -one in the UFC a long time ago, right, the, the uh, Ultimate Fighter, and then um, I ran into a 0-3 uh, run. Um, but if you look at those three guys, uh, I mean, I took the Devontae Smith up away class against a guy who had eight knockouts, and he was like eight and one at the time, and got knocked out. Um, and I took that short notice, like it, it was a 10-day fight or 10-day nose fight. And then uh, the next guy was Grant Dawson, who if you look at him, he's like undefeated in the UFC, and he moved up away class now. And so, uh, and I had, you know, there were some, there were some circumstances on that fight as well, um, physically for me, but uh uh, and then I fought Julio Arce, who's beat some of the best. I mean, he has a win over Dan Ige. You know, he moved down to weight class. But, uh, I mean, that, I mean, these guys are no slouches. So I went 0-3 against really tough dudes. And I also thought I was winning that fight with Julio Arce until I got knocked out. Um, so I, I don't think it was any kind of problems that I was having. I think it was just the competition was really good. And I, you know, I never had really game plan fights. You know, I just kind of go in there. I know how to fight. You know, I just go in there and just let the fight happen. And uh, I think in those fights... I, I did that too much, I, I, and, uh, you know, the last few fights, the Sean Woodson fight was obviously a short-notice fight, too, but even in that short notice, I had more of a game plan going into that fight than, uh, than some of my other fights previously. So I think just game planning and kind of training smarter as well. I used to go spar and just, you know, beat the dog shit out of my training partners. You know, we'd both get in and get out and feel like we did more than a fight because we just beat each other up so much. And so... I've kind of toned that back down a little bit and been a little bit more intimate with my sparring. You know, I've, you know, instead of having a bunch of different sparring partners and my coaches trying to watch me on a huge mat with a bunch of other fighters, we go in a little early, we get a cage, I do three rounds with the same guy so I can, uh, you know, I can adjust in, in between rounds instead of having just a fight, you know. So uh, I think just more of that specific training. Before you started on this run, right, I mean, was there, had you started thinking about, like, what else is there? It's like, do I have other skills that I can make a living at? Or like, what, what was it? Yeah, you know, uh, I went to college for a couple of years. I was, you know, uh, I was going towards the uh, the road of being an accountant. My mom's an accountant. So I was going to do the same thing. And then I uh, got into fighting, turned professional, and decided, hey, you know, I can be a professional now as a fighter. I can't be a professional fighter when I'm 40. I could be an accountant when I'm 40. So I can do those things later down the line. But, yeah, you know, uh, you financially start thinking about these things. You know, I'm married, I'm 32, you know, we're thinking about having a kid soon. So it's like, I can't just be pushing this hobby above, you know, making a financial, you know, uh, situation for my family. So uh, right before that, I was thinking, you know, maybe there's Bellator, maybe there's these other big organizations I can maybe slide into there. But I was coming off a three fight losing streak. So I just told myself, you know what, if I got to go back to these regional shows, uh, maybe I will, uh, uh, I'm just going to train my ass off and, I'm going to beat the dog crap out of these guys. And if I'm going to have to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to do the, the best of my abilities. So I was training my butt off, fighting Sean Woodson, uh, three-day notice. It was three-day notice, but it was kind of like a five-week camp, you know. And so, because uh, I put myself through it, you know. I, I, I made sure I was in shape in case this was going to happen. And my manager was on top of me doing that as well, saying that, hey, you might get an opportunity. And I was thinking, I'm one and four in the UFC. There's no way they're going to call me. He's like, I'm telling you, man, Sean likes you. Let's get you, you know, if you're, if you're ready, you're in Vegas, you have your medicals done, you're in shape, you can make the weight. Uh, they're going to slide you in. There's a lot of people falling out of these cards with the whole COVID back then. So luckily for me, I think I was like the third week in a row and I was like on a list of like three guys you know, each week, and um, uh, just they would pass on me, pass on me, and then they actually passed on me with the Sean Woodson fight. They went with uh, Daniel Pineda, and then, uh, but I think he said that he was going to fail the COVID testing or something, and so 
I was actually the, the second or the third choice or whatever it was. And, uh, and luckily for me, I was able to capitalize on that. And, and then, yeah, like you said, uh, besides the Duho Choi fight, uh, you know, three out of four has been really great. And uh, two of them short notice. And uh, I, the Duho Choi was a bit of a, uh, a lapse in judgment on where I should have kept the fight. But, um, uh, no, and besides that, you know, I'm, I'm happy even with those four fights. Nice. Is, I guess, is life uh, a lot better right now than it was maybe two years ago? Oh, 100%. You know, me and my wife, uh, during the COVID, we had moved from our house into an apartment. And we said, hey, you know, let's just save money and let's try to, you know, let's do this and this and this. And literally, we had moved june and i think i fought sean woodson june 22nd or something so and i got a bonus on that fight so we went from <laughs> you know minus you know ten fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt you know just all these things to uh making a you know close to 80 grand that night and was able to pay off a bunch of stuff and put some money in the bank and then you know getting a win over nate landware in the way i did and, and then also obviously uh with the jordan and getting another good finish over him and it's not even the money, you know, it's just, you know, just understanding that I, like, you know, when you fight and fight and fight, you're like, man, I deserve to be in the UFC, I deserve to be here, and then you get there and you just, you fail sometimes, and it's just like, it, it can be a big, you know, uh, mental uh, frustration, and so for me, just getting back to where I feel like I belong, you know, you're going to win some, or you're going to lose some, but I feel like I'm, I should be winning more than I'm losing, and I wasn't doing that. And I still only have it. I'm four and five in the UFC, so I'm hoping to uh, get a win over Peterson and, and even that out at the very least. Nice. Uh, Peterson doesn't seem to like you very much. You said you were trolling him a little. Were you, uh, were, were you sliding in his DMs? Or? Yeah, for sure. I, well, the, the whole situation with that, it, it was I, I fought Choi and lost. And, uh, and I was just looking at featherweights. You know, I was, I, you know, I was writing down a list of names of guys that – would would be uh, you know you know good opponents for me and not necessarily just good opponents. I was looking for exciting guys, you know. And Peterson is one of those guys. Caceres is one of those guys. You know, these type of guys is what I'm looking for. And Jordan was one of those guys. I just got lucky that I was able to slide in uh, short notice with him. And uh, but uh, with Choi, I lost with Choi, and I was looking for fights guys to fight. And uh, Peterson had just beat Huber, and uh, had called out Nate Landwehr, and I was all like, oh, that's cool. I mean, that'll be a good fight. And then uh, I had looked on UFC news alerts a few days later, and Landwehr got booked up. And so I'm like. Well, shoot, if Landwehr's booked up, then maybe Peterson will fight me. So I called out, uh, so I just DM'd him. And I was like, hey, man, you know, October, November, December, whatever month you want, if you were willing to fight, I'd be willing to do it. You know, I got respect for you, whatever. It was a nice, it was a nice DM. It wasn't anything, I wasn't trolling him. I wasn't talking shit. I wasn't doing anything like that. Just completely ignored me. And I was like, all right, well, maybe he doesn't want to fight. And then I had posted on my Instagram another nice post. It was like, hey, UFC, maybe you booked this fight. Uh, and I tagged him in it, just ignored me. And then I'm like, you know what? And my, my manager was all like, yeah, maybe he just doesn't want to fight you or whatever the situation is. I'm like, well, you know, I guess you gotta, you got to start trolling people maybe. And maybe that's how you got to do it. So I had posted on some of his things. And, uh, and I don't know time-wise when that was, but uh, then I ended up getting the Jordan fight. So I was like, I completely forgot about uh, Peterson. And then uh, I fought Jordan, and then they asked me to fill in again uh, short notice against Mike Trev Trevino, who's fighting on the same card. Uh, wasn't able to do it. My shin was pretty messed up from the fight, so uh, I had to heal up. And um, and then, uh, and I, but I completely forgot about Peterson. And then my manager called me, and he's like, uh, he's like, how much do you love me? And I'm like, well, Jason, of course I love you, man. You've, I mean, you're back in the UFC. You've done everything for me. And he's like, well, we got the Peterson fight February 5th, which was four months from when he had told me. So I was like, not super happy with the the length of uh, of the camp, but um, uh, was happy I got the fight that I was asking for earlier. But uh, then he wants to go say I was, you know, talking shit and that I'm a weirdo and this and that. But uh, I was just looking for a fight and I was being respectable about it. And the, I was only trolling him because he completely ignored me. And I thought that was kind of disrespectful. If someone DM'd me about a fight, you know, may, if, even if he, even if he would have told me, hey, man, uh, it, it doesn't work good for my time. It doesn't work. You know, my, my coach doesn't think it's a good fight. I wouldn't have posted that. I wouldn't have said a word to anybody. Like, I'm just I, I'm just not a call out kind of guy. And. So the fact that he thinks that, you know, I'm like, a, like some asshole for doing that, just, you know, it's confusing to me. Last thing for me, I guess, knowing that this is a fight that you wanted because you were looking for exciting yeah. fights, is that what you're anticipating? I mean, do you feel this is going to be, a, you know, a fight of the night type fight? Or do you feel like, you know, given all that's transpired, now you want to go in there and, like, finish him and destroy him? Oh, you know, I'm never thinking about round to round. I'm always thinking uh, finish, finish, finish. I don't like to go to the, you know, the, the scorecards. If you look at my record, uh, my finish rate's, you know, pretty high. And it's, you know, almost, you know, identical with submissions and, and knockouts. So um, 
I'm always looking for a finish, and that has nothing to do with, you know, any animosity or, you know, respect or whatever the situation is. I'm going to go in there and fight to my abilities, but uh, he is one of those guys that presses forward, can take damage, seems to have a chin on him, uh, and he, he gets a little crazy sometimes, and, and uh, he's tough and he's durable, and I think I bring the same kind of attributes to the fight as well, and uh, I'm willing to press the action and, and see where it goes, you know. Uh, I don't think either one of us necessarily care on shooting a shot. I think we're just going to, you know, stand in the pocket and swing. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it.